Can poetry be a lifestyle? Can someone spend his, her whole life reading or writing poetry? Can poetry be a culture? The answers of all these questions above are yes. Yes, it can. And it should be that way. Poetry is the most beautiful way to search our own self deeply, whether we study our own mundane lives or of others or our relationships with each other and with everything around us. Poetry leads us to the deeper state of our consciousness. From where we look into everything comes our ways to understand the very purpose of our own lives. Hence, it should be our lifestyle, shouldn't it? This book consists of the poems that signify the events of life, no matter what life brings for us to experience on our own dark or bright, high or low, joy or sorrow. They all enrich us with great lessons. Life is our master indeed. The sky fell on him again. And again the sky fell on him. It happened many times, but only on that occasion he made a decision that he never did before. The sky fell on him again. He was on the beach. He was pressed hard against the sandy shore. The light faded out. In the darkness, he only listened to the sound of the sea like a distant music. He was not afraid, as he was used to it, like an epileptic patient is accustomed to his epileptic episodes at one point of his illness. It happened to him many times. The sky fell on him many times, so he was used to it. He was only waiting in the darkness to see what happened at last. He was listening to the sea like a distant music interrupted by strong wind. He was waiting to see whether he died or survived on that occasion. That was the only option he had. He knew it. He got used to it. He was waiting. He felt pressed, smashed, crushed and sunk in the darkness. Perhaps in the same way, one little village frog once felt under his foot. He now remembered that rainy day. One rainy day in his village, he accidentally stepped on a frog. He felt moist, slippery existence of the frog under his bare foot, and he heard a squishing sound. He jumped away immediately and looked back to see the flattened little frog smashed by him. He was speechless, broken, felt like crying. He came near the frog, sat and saw it was still alive. He tried to touch it softly as an apology, but it ran. No, it didn't run. It couldn't run. It just managed to drag itself away as quickly as possible towards the pond next to it, just before it crawled down to the pond and disappeared into the pond-edge shrubs. It stood for a moment and turned. Perhaps it wanted to say to him, Why did you do that to me? He now remembered about that little frog while lying on the sandy beach under the lightless sky's foot. He was smashed, squashed, half sunk in the sand, and he remembered the frog. He felt like the frog at that time. Time passed. The episode ended like all others in the past. The sky went back to the sky. The darkness disappeared into the light, and he survived again. He survived and he made a decision that he had never made before. He decided to terminate his life by himself, in his own way, by his own self. Not by the society, or politicians, or religions, or enemies, or lovers, or philosophers, or friends. 